Okay, so I'm Grace Walker. Hello and welcome to Dungeon Draft. This is a map making software for all of your map making needs, whether it's taverns, dungeons, basements, whatever you can think of, you can throw a hat in the ring and attempt to make. So we're just going to go new map, 30 by 30, we're going to have the wizard. I'm just going to get a feel for what this offers. If you're thinking about buying it, I'd recommend probably do, or maybe wait a couple of months and then get it. They're always it's not just a software that's been released and is what it is, they are adding more and more stuff as it goes. So we get the option between generating a dungeon and a cave. So this dungeon uh, is like a nice little stone labyrinth type thing. Or we can have different walls and surfaces, we can have wood with wood. And that can change the feel of it completely, we can have it more complex, more dense. Uh, we can have it a lot less complex, a lot less dense. That doesn't feel less complex or less dense, that feels about the same. Okay, that's that's a lot less complex. Three rooms. Or we can throw our hat in the ring and make a cave. And the cave looks somewhat like that, or a little bit like that, or even a little bit like that. But I think it's easier to populate some kind of dungeon than it is to populate some kind of cave. So we'll finish with this. And if you don't like what it's offered you, you go on the floor shape tool, you hold alt and you just, just wipe bits of it out or you wipe all of it out and start from fresh. Which is what I'm going to do. I don't know what I want to make, but we're going to have uh, a wooden floor with uh, a cobble wall. And we want, we want a map that has an entrance somewhere. So one area of the map is going to need to be the entrance, which we're going to have as up here. And we're going to have, uh, I'm just going to draw shapes and see how it goes. Just click wherever feels not terrible. Uh, buildings in whatever fantasy setting probably have weird shapes at entrances. Uh, and now we're actually going to knock out like a chunk of it. A couple of chunks maybe. Maybe like some supports that are holding the whole place up. Where it's got the dirt outside and this kind of cramped internal space that's somewhat open but has these support pillars, I'm feeling that this is a basement or some kind of underground type situation. In fact, I might even... Uh... Whoops, okay. I'm gonna have to finish the shape and then do Control Z. I might even think about changing the floor to something less wooden. I'm not sure if I want to do that though. Hmm. Tempting. I just generally don't like this shape. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start fresh. And you can see that it's kind of easy to operate and it's instinctual. Middle mouse, drag around the screen and just Holding ALT, holding CONTROL, holding SHIFT does stuff, CONTROL zooms, SHIFT changes the size of things. Uh, I don't remember what ALT does, I think it lets you turn things. So we'll go for somewhat less wacky of a shape. We're gonna have like a little corridor entrance here to wherever it is. And then that'll split into two. And we'll have a room here. Uh, and then this corridor will also split. So I had like a two, two, whatever it's called. Door there. And then another room here. And then we'll have the corridor continue to a final room at the bottom. Now I've got like some kind of basement entrance and three distinct rooms. Maybe it's like, um, if any of you played Oblivion, the very first Dark Brotherhood quest to go kill, I think it was Rolof, Rolaf or something, and the basement of the inn had three or four rooms in it that people slept in. So I'm quite happy with this. Uh, we might even get cheeky and have a secret room, which I think we can do with a cave brush. So if we brush ourselves a little cave, a little winding cave, and get the bigger brush and have like an opening here. I don't want it to go off the map. All right, I can't. Okay, I can undo cave drawings. Oh, too far. Okay. So I want it to open into like some kind of larger cave circle. Maybe like some kind of stash. Yeah, I kind of dig that. 
Now I want to put some portals down. Portals include doors, windows, and just empty open thresholds. Uh, so we want to threshold the top here because this is just going to be a staircase leading down. We're going to want to have uh, a freestanding door here because there's no wall to attach it to. Uh, I don't have a way to flip that. So we might just have to use the other one. There we go. So we've got, we've got a little double door there. We're going to do the same thing here. Switch between the two door models. And then we'll do it once more for this final doorway here. And then for the cave. Uh, let's get the tiny brush and let's push it in a little bit. Because we want it to be one door thick. There we go. We can have it uh, open up as they squeeze inside of the cave. So now that we've shrunk that cave a little bit, we can put a door on that as well. Maybe like a little wooden door. Eh, it looks more like a stepping stone. Uh, I'm not feeling some of these doors. Uh, that one's nice. So we'll freestand that door, flip it around, and now uh, there's a little, almost like a double closet door situation. So we're going to want to block that off some way so it's not so obvious, but now we can look into things like the terrain brush. It's not going to matter because this is an internal map, but you can draw gravel. Uh, likewise, if you are outside, you can have a grassy situation. This is an underground map, so the dirt fits best, I think. Um, it's not like there's going to be any windows or anything. So now we just go into the object tool and we click that we're looking for some tagged things and we're looking for some living quarters objects. We need some beds, we can just grab a nice little double bed here and we can change the color of the sheets. Maybe this guy likes green sheets. We can hold alt to scale the bed up. We'll just leave things at their normal scale. We can click the snap button so it stops snapping to the grid. We can have uh, a nice little double bed situation here with... Uh, we're gonna... It says that they're chairs, but we'll use them as end tables. I don't see anything wrong with that. Unless there is an end table. There isn't. We can use the bar chair, though. It's an end table. Put maybe a little chair in the corner. Uh, I like that chair. Maybe we have uh, a loose shirt. Just If we turn the shadow off, then it can just rest on top of the bed. Maybe this guy has a teddy bear on his bed. Uh, what else can we do? A little bear rug, scale it up a bit, have it as an entrance thing. Could have it between the two beds. I want that to go more under. Could have it tucked under the beds. Uh, I don't know where you would put a bear rug if you had one. We'll just put it here. It can show some layers that the the bear is underneath things. Put the scale back down. Maybe we've got a desk in the corner. These rooms are quite big, actually. Uh, maybe we've got a little fireplace. Keep things warm. Nice and toasty. I think that would actually go above the wall. Because you would see it. Uh, no, I guess the roof would block it in. So just go back to the layer. You can layer objects however you want. You could have things under or over things. Um, put a little bath. Uh, maybe we'll have like a, a whole bathing room in that other room. Uh, that's an actual end table. So we'll just cover up the old tables with that. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got? A bar. Wow, we can have a bar and a bath in the other room. Stick, uh... Stick that there, and then we'll go back up and we'll get another chair. We'll have a couple of chairs at the table. That's the toasty chair, because it's right next to the fire. It's two double beds, four chairs. That's, uh, the correct amount. We'll have one at the desk, and they can drag it across if they need it. Can put some notes on the desk. Uh, I don't think we want a shadow on the notes, so turn the shadow off. Just uh, 
pass around some random paper odds and ends. Uh, you can even have a couple of papers there and... What else have we got? A potted plant. Every nothing brings a room better, together better than a random plant. So I'll put one in the corner. And just clicking pretty much random objects for three or four minutes, we've designed a pretty good looking, interesting room for a battle map. Um, I'm not sure what exactly I want to do with this second room. Uh, I did bump into that bar. So maybe we'll have a bar up here. And then we're looking for... So it says that it's a round table, but if we make it small enough and we put it at the bar, it comes across as stools. So put some stools in the bar. In fact, I think where stools are supposed to be in order, we're going to want them snapped to the grid. That looks a lot better than my garbage placement. Uh, and then there's a bar, so we're going to want some tables. Maybe one table here, maybe one table here. Then we'll go back to our old stools, make sure they're the same size. Again, we'll go a bit of grid snapping. Ah, it doesn't snap so nicely, actually. We'll put three stools. Uh, actually, I think uh, tables like this usually have benches. That's a small uh, cabinet thing. We can put the cabinet behind the bar. And there could be that thing that they have all the fancy drinks on. So we're looking for a bench now. There we go, there's a bench. We can put the bench here. I think if we hold A, it mirrors it. So we'll, we'll have a little bit of a mirrored bench. Mix it up so they don't all look the same. Now we've got a nice little bar situation going on, but it's very brown. It's almost too brown. Uh, just a, a bucket of water in the corner. That's how that's how they can do the washing up. Magic shelf. A chest. Wardrobe, wardrobe, small table. Ah, uh, what can we do to get some colour in here? Maybe stop going on living quarters, go mess hall. Get some food on. Uh, let's get some food colour. What is a food colour? The thing suggested red, so we'll go for red. Yeah, that's looking food colour. Take the shadow off. Maybe scale it up a little bit. Put some plates of food down. They're all kind of maybe should have rotated them a little bit, but I'm I'm okay with that. Can have a little cauldron by that. This guy's getting a side of bread with his. As is that guy. It's a giant bottle. Just put some uh, bottles in. If you wanted to, you could stack the bottles on here. That would take forever, and I'm definitely not going to do that. What else have we got? Just some crumbs. Put some crumbs in the middle of the table. Seems like something that had happened. Especially on the bar floor down here. Scale them down a little bit. Legs of meat, some knives and forks. Not gonna worry about those, that's for sure. A little bit of a gravy pouring thing. Put one of those on each table. Lanterns, now that's something to think about. But uh, we've added some color to the bar. Not a lot, but some. Ooh, a carpet, that could change things. That could really change things. Alright, so if we put the carpet... It's a good carpet shape. That feels quite good, actually. I'm digging that. Maybe one as you're walking in, under the door. Maybe one behind the bar. We can put one here in front of the water. Catch any drippings. 
Adds a lot of colour to the room as well. It's just the same red as the food, but that's okay. So now we're two rooms in. We've got a nice little bedroom. We've got a nice little bar chill zone. And now we've got the fancy room that we're going to want to block some things off with. Uh, so let's go maybe office. See what that offers us. Uh, maybe go for a little ceramic looking grey. No, it's more brown. There we go. Maybe this guy's a map maker. We've got some pots of maps. Put them in the corner. <laughs> We could uh, put that behind the, thro the throne he sits in. Don't know why there'd be a throne in here. He could have a tiger rug on the way in. Or uh, let's get a, like a soft blue for this guy's entrance rug. I dig that because then people can see that uh, leads into something. Uh, do we have like a map design desk? I think there is one. Yeah, here it is. Oh, those are just maps. Map table, big. <sighs> Too big, scale it down. Alright, so that can go up there. Then it has some height if we give it the shadow. And then we're going to want a uh, chair for him to sit and work at that place with. Maybe a table for storage. Art supplies, the like. I don't know. We'll, we'll put it there. See how it goes. And then he's going to want to be able to sleep somewhere. So we're going to have to go back to living quarters. And he could just have... Oh, it's like a crib. It's a wee babby bed. Uh, he can have white sheets. Put that there. And then now we're looking for some kind of large cabinet or wardrobe. Put that there with like art supply stuff. Oh, that's nice, but I don't know if it's quite good enough. Got a couple different wardrobes. I think I dig the false backed wardrobe like this. Press that just to there, press that one just to there. And then, say you're doing this on roll 20, you'd have a dynamic lighting layer on the wardrobe. And then, if the player opens the wardrobe, you'd delete that, revealing the second set of doors. And then the cave. In the cave, we'll show off something called the material brush that I found. And with that, you can. We don't want it below ground, we want that on a user layer. You can paint a little pile of money. Or we could paint lava, but that's a lot more sinister. We could paint a little pit, look at that. If we paint a pit, and then we put money in the pit. <laughs> He's got a little money pit. Oh man, this is going to be hard to pull off. Maybe we need a bigger pit. Was this the pit one? No. I think that was the pit one. Yeah. So we want... <laughs> We're going layers here. We want a pit that is filled with money. There we go. That kind of did it. I don't want that to touch on there, though. Can't touch the edges. Alright, so we did that. And now we're going to look for some kind of treasure or dungeon, maybe. Let's go dungeon. We can have some scary stuff on the way in. Wooden pillars. Skeleton. Jeez, that's harsh. Uh gonna want that stuff on top. So we can have a skeleton chained at to the bottom of the pit. 
along with all the money, and that this map making dude got a lot more sinister really quickly. Uh, assorted bones? Harsh. Uh, a ladder to get in and out of the pit. That's quite nice. Gives it some depth. Let's put the shadow back on. Which I don't know if we want the shadow one on that. If we zoom in. I think we just want that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the uh, stairs at the entrance. Show that it is a downward moving slope. Snap to grid, give it some stairs. Okay, the scale was uh, slightly too low. Nice. Not too nice, though. Kind of didn't attach. There we go. It's got stairs leading down, one double room to stay in, a bar chill zone, and then some sinister map-making office dude who has a skeleton pit. <laughs> Put a skull on the middle of the pit. That snap back off. What else can we put with this? Yeah, it's kind of uh, all the money in one zone at the minute, so we can spread around some sprinklings. Uh, you could kind of uh, like uh, foreshadow it if we put some money here. Don't know if we want the shadow on for that. Uh, makes it kind of floating. Just put it there. Yes, look at this. We've got a little trail going. And speaking of trails, there is a path tool that allows you to make blood. So we'll have it fade in and then fade out as well. No, we won't have the fade out. And then that's very slightly visible there. This is a lot of blood. That'll do. But, uh, <laughs> it's a bit hardcore. But it gets the job done. And from the room perspective, it is just barely visible. So your observant players will pick up on that and then you could do something interesting. There are other trails as well, like a little railroad. God, that's really spinning. Not sure if you would want a railroad on this particular map, but uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Can have some spikes. Yeah, make it intimidating. Go back to the little money drops. Thing is a treasure room without a treasure chest. Turn on the shadows of that. Yeah, I think so. It's a long chest here. A knocked over coin purse. We could put that on the gold pile to uh, make it seem less just like a just this nondescript central zone that was just had no decoration to it. Don't know about that. <laughs> Pit trap. Oh, they had a whole thing. <sighs> Could have a double hole. <laughs> just holes among holes. Uh, I assume he doesn't want people coming in here, so maybe a, a little trap set up. Possibly. Put that under the scale. No, it doesn't really work. But um, there are so many tokens to build off of. And I was just going through the tags because they are nicely organized. But if you go all tokens, you can just scroll through every single thing that goes from rocks to farming stuff to cobwebs, little shards. Uh, that's like a blood waterfall. We made that some kind of red. No, not feeling that. Put a little ruby or two in here. 
I don't know what those are. Eggs. <laughs> Eggs, but I'm using them as gemstones. Again, it's all about repurposing things. <laughs> Put a little chair up here. <laughs> That's a rubble. It says that it's a grave, but it's also nice just to uh, have some rubble in the cave walkway zone, so it's not all just the same. It's just so much stuff. There's a magic portal as well. Could be one way to block the thing off. Blood stain. Or a water stain, rather. A thing of swords. An actual sword. I kind of dig putting a sword in under the gold pile. Loads of stuff to do with ships and sails and scuffs and bridges, water fountains. We can give him a nice little sink, look at that. A little wash basin, especially for his art zone. Ah, uh, we can put a fountain in it if we go over. Ooh, the water kind of flies out a bit far for that. I guess that it is a fountain. Uh, if we get... Because that's kind of a small one. So if we get a, a more long-sized one... Alright, that didn't delete itself. There we go. Click save. In fact, I, I'm surprised it hasn't crashed on me. It does crash sometimes. We'll give him this, and then the fountain can fit. If we shrink the fountain down. Lovely. Lovely. Ah, what else we got? Just a bucket of water. Sure, we can slap that down next to it. Probably fills that up and uses it for his painting situation. What else we got? We got signs, buckets of veg, a knocked over sack of grain. We'll put that behind the bar. That seems like the kind of thing that would be in uh, here. Seems fine to me. Got sacks. Leaves, sprouts, trees, thorns, and full-on canoes and knocked-over carts. I could put the wreck of a wagon at the bottom of the cart. That'd be uh, one and a half things. But um, I have absolutely zero artistic skill, and I have managed to put together a pretty interesting map. I think you'd want to do something with the hallways to make them a little bit less monotonous, but not too much. Maybe like some torches every now and then. Like a torch here, a torch here, a torch here, a torch here. But I kind of dig this map. I could see my players going into it, using it, some kind of sinister in basement. Stairs down, a little room for the party to stay in. They, like, awkwardly discuss who shares the double beds. Uh, the tavern bar area, a couple of NPCs in here chilling out. And then, obviously, the room that everyone in the bar says, oh, don't go in that room, and the party's like, you can't tell me what to do. If you say don't go in it, we're going to try and go in it. And then they go in it, and they're like, oh, it's just a map-making room. Wait a minute, is that a bloodstain? Open up the thing, find the thing, bit of treasure. I just kind of dig it. Um, and the software is neat. You can do lots of stuff with it. You can do insides, outsides, buildings, uh, basements, upstairs, attics. You can do different layers of the same building, overlay them all. Uh, here's compare level. It's just a cool software, and this was me messing around in it for about 30 minutes with no real plan or idea of what I wanted to do and I mean I'm happy with it, it looks good, it's easy to use and it allows people like me with zero artistic skill to get away with making cool stuff for their players and their games. So thank you guys for joining me, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're wondering whether or not Dungeon Draft is for you, this video may have helped with that. Um, I would recommend it, especially considering it's still getting updated, they're still adding more tokens, textures, and feelings to it. There's a good number of brushes, but not quite as many as you might hope for. There's like, uh, as we can see, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 terrains. Um, there's a good number of objects. Like, this is a lot of objects. 
but you can run out quite quick. Like if you're making a farm and you're dividing it into four or five fields, you end up using all like four of the crop tokens and you're like, man, I wish there was a couple more. But hopefully in the future they're going to add custom assets. There's also um, things like the material brush with seven materials isn't like a lot and um, where we have the path tool and there's four paths at the minute, a couple of railroads and whatever that is. What is that? Oh, that's like rail tracks, but without the middle bit. They have these tracks and they have a couple, but there's just, there's not a lot of them, if you know what I mean. So you can run out quite quickly. Um, and they do look good, but there's only four of them at the minute. But they're adding more, and this software will enable you to make cool maps, even with zero artistic skill, even if you're not that creative, just by bit by bit chucking things together. I'm happy with how this particular map turned out, and I might even save it and keep it and use it, who knows. But thank you guys for joining me, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!